Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be starting with exercise 21.1, which is chapter 1, Measures of Central Tendencies, first exercise from class in ICSE's Flank EMU books. So over here, we have questions 1 and 2. They are the very basic type of questions. It's like the very first concept, arithmetic mean. First one, straightforward question. In this, you understand that arithmetic mean is the same as what you have learned all these years as average which is sum of all terms upon the number of terms, okay? So here you have given some terms and you are asked to find the arithmetic mean of these terms. The formula is sum of all terms upon number of terms. So the sum of these terms is 35. I have done that beforehand. You can go ahead and cross check. And the number of terms is 5. It's very simple. Your arithmetic mean is 7. Now with this very concept, let's move on to question number 2. It is a very similar question but just like it has more sub parts wherein there are, there are some tweaking around in the number of your terms or the sum of your terms. So let's get started. Number 1, you have the mean of marks which is the same as question number 1. Let's see. You have all these marks given here that are achieved by 15 students in a particular test. So number one, what you need to know is the sum of these marks. Now I have done that beforehand. It is 207. So direct mean will be 207 divided by the number of terms, which is 15. When you do that, you have 3 5s are 15, 3 6s are 18, 3 9s are 27. Dividing that, you get 5 1s are 5, 5 3s are 15, and 5 8s are 40. So now you have 13.8. Moving on to question number 2. Now they are asking what will be the mean of ma their marks when the marks of each student is increased by 4. That is, every student score 4 marks more. Now you already had 207 and if all of them scored 4 marks more, it would be 15 into 4 more. So you have 15 4 is a 60 and still the number of terms would be the same, 15. Now, if you want to make it look larger in your exam sheet, what you can do is you can write down each term and then put a plus sign and then you know the whole divide by the number of terms and then you finally write the sum. That will just make your question look longer but even this is acceptable. Over here, I have not written the formula for the second question as I mentioned it here. This was only for explanation purpose but in your exams, you have to write the formula first. And then you have to carry on with your steps, at least for this first sub-question. They need to know that you know the formula. That's the whole point of it. Okay. So now that you have this, you have 267 upon 15. Same thing. 3 5s are 15. 3 8s are 24. 3 9s are 27. You divide it. 5 1s are 5. 5 7s are 35. And then you have 40 remaining, which is 8. So you have 17.8. Let's move on to sub-question 3. The mean of their marks when two marks are deducted from the marks of each student. So now you already have the mean of their, sorry, the sum of their marks initially. Now if two marks are deducted, that means 15 into two marks are deducted from the sum. Why? Because two marks from each student's marks. So that is 15 times 2 is removed. So 15 twos are 30. And since it's removed, you will make a minus sign in between. And then still the number of terms will be 15 because it's still the marks of only 15 students. Okay, so now that you have these marks, what will be 207 minus 30? It will be 177 upon 15. Now if you see closely, both of them are divisible by 3 again. So you have 3 5s are 15, 3 again 5s are 15 and 3 9s are 27. Simplifying it, 5 ones are 5, 5 ones are 5, and 40 remains. So again, so you have 11.8. Moving on to the last sub question, which is the fourth sub question. If the mean of the marks where the marks of each student are doubled. Now, if the marks of each student are doubled, then your sum will also double. So you have 207 into 2 upon 15. So now you know the answer to this. It's already you know the 13.8 into 2. What will that be? 13 into 13, uh, 13 plus 13, 26. And then you have 8 plus a, uh, point 8 plus point 8, 1.6. So 26 plus 1.6, 27.6. 
and that is the solutions for questions 1 and 2 of exercise 21.1 which is measures of central tendency this is the basic formula the very first formula of mean there are two more formulas which you'll learn because like there you will be learning three more but then the first one is exactly this but in written in different forms so basically once you have learned this formula you will tackle all the questions for mean very easily thanks for watching we'll be doing the next two questions in the next video